Hi, everybody. It's uh, Bruce Collins over at Cambium Networks. Uh, thanks for joining the session today. We're going to talk about CN Vision and uh, really want to uh, uh, thank you for joining us. This is uh, our first in a series of uh, system integrator calls on uh, CN Vision, where we really hope to get some feedback from uh, the SIs that are deploying CN Vision or considering deploying CN Vision. So we do want to make this uh, as interactive as possible. So you'll notice the, and you guys know the routine by now, I'm sure, with the the question answers in the chat window on the on the webinar interface. If you can put your uh, questions in there, that'd be great. If you are an SI and you're deploying C Envision, we'd love to hear you, your experience too. So if you are interested in uh, sharing, we can unmute you and 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 have you uh, say a few words if you'd like. Once we get into it, um, certainly if you have questions, you, we can do that as well. Uh, so uh, again, because this is a, a, a session that we're really focusing on uh, kind of a smaller group with, with SIs, we can kind of keep it uh, more informal and really try to answer your questions. I'm joined today by uh, the team here. We've got uh, uh, Jack DeSantos. Uh, Jack, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, and then I'll, I'll uh, embellish your, uh, your, your response. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone. Jack DeSanto. Uh from uh, Cambium Networks, obviously. Uh, that said, I am the global sales lead for CN Vision, uh, meaning that I deal with all of our SIs and I work with many of our distributors in regards to uh, creating awareness for CN Vision and assisting uh, secu security integrators and distributors alike uh, on their uh, potential wireless CCTV projects with our team. All right, thanks, Jack. And then we also have uh, Chime Keskar, who's a uh, uh, our uh, system uh, engineer and, and architect on the CN Vision platform. So, Jimmy, do you want to say hi? Hey, hello, everybody. Uh, look forward to this webinar and answering all your uh, questions related to technical queries and uh, show you the demo of what we have got. And yeah, then, thanks, uh, Bruce. You can oh, sure. Yeah. And then we have um, uh, Dmitry Moisev, uh, who is our uh, lead technical architect across this platform and others at Cambium Networks. So uh, Dimitri's on as well, if you want to say hi, Dimitri. Hey, everybody. So uh, uh, what I want to really highlight is that this team is available to support you on, on your CN Vision uh, projects. And we're here to answer your questions today, but you can certainly reach out other times as well. Um, and we can uh, certainly answer those questions. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, get started. What we would like to do is have a, th these uh, sessions with the SIs or system integrators on a periodic basis, and we'll kind of gauge based on interest level uh, to see how often we should have these. But uh, we want to really make this a, a, an open Q&A. Today, we do have some new things to talk about. Uh, we'll talk about some uh, recent uh, deployments and some case studies of what's been happening out there. Uh, we'll introduce and talk a bit in more detail on the CN Vision Max RP, which is a new product. And then we'll, um, uh, Jimmy will give a quick demo of that. And then we'll certainly take any uh, general Q&A on CN Vision itself. And then if there's any, uh, you know, we'll have plenty of time for any questions or Q&A at the end. I am going to start with a couple of poll questions just to get a sense of where everyone's at. So let me pop that up. Let me find that first. First, I'd like to uh, pop up this first question. You'll see uh, really trying to understand what your view of the current video surveillance marketplace is. And so if you can, you'll see that poll on your screen there. I'd uh, like to see what your uh, your thoughts are on uh, how the video surveillance market is, is happening with um, both uh, in general, doesn't have to be wireless, doesn't have to be seen vision, but in general, how things have been going uh, since uh, beginning of 2020 when, uh, you know, certainly some other scenarios uh, in, in with COVID and, and the economy taking the hit that it did, uh, what we're, what, what you guys are seeing. So we'll give it another minute or you know maybe another 15 seconds to see if anybody else wants to uh, to comment. If you are uh, voting other and you'd like to share, I'd be curious what your thoughts are in the chat window. And then I'll share the poll here in a second. All right, let me uh, 
I'm going to close out the poll. If anyone wants to get their last uh, vote in the last second here, all right, I'm going to close this out and share. You'll see it pop up on the screen here. So uh, what you see is a you know a pretty pretty good mix across here. That uh, although a, a large percentage said it was slow in 2020, but starting to see signs of recovery. Uh, that's kind of what. I've been hearing as well when we talk to uh, to different SIs and, and distributors, partners around the world. Uh, and then uh, looks like some have had, uh, didn't miss a beat, others have not seen the recovery. So kind of across the board. So thanks for that, appreciate the, uh, the feedback on that. Let's pop up another one here real quick, uh, hide that. And let me launch this next one. This is really just to get a sense of what uh, what the audience here today is, uh, uh, what their experience has been. So if you uh, can comment on that. All right, let's give it another uh, five or 10 seconds here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and close this and share the results. Appreciate everyone's participating. Uh, so, you know, I guess it looks like quite a few, we have quite a few distributors on here and partners. Um, amongst the SIs that are on, we have, um, uh, Let's see, we have some that are just learning, some that have bids in but haven't yet deployed, and then some that have deployed. So uh, again, good cross-section, that's great. So we have, uh, uh, so certainly those of you that are just learning about CN Vision, we look to answer your questions today. Uh, those of you that have successfully deployed, if you wanna comment in the chat window about what that, that, that project was like, or if you'd even like to say a few words about it, let me know uh, on the chat window and then uh, we'll continue on. Let me just uh, go ahead and hide that one and let's move on to the next uh, topic here. Uh, we'll have a couple more polls here as we go. Uh, by the way, if you uh, if you hang on to the end, uh, for those uh, uh, you know SIs that are on the call today, we do have a couple of prizes we'll be raffling off uh, if you uh, if you hang on to the end, but that'll be for the uh, for the SIs uh, that are on the call. Uh, let's see. So one of the things I want to just highlight is where we're seeing success with uh, uh, with CN Vision, and you'll see kind of a, a list of applications here. And really, what I I, I would I'm going to ask uh, Jack to comment on some of the projects that he's been involved in, and I'd like to just make sure that the invitation is out there for you guys to reach out to Jack uh, with any projects you have. Uh, but, but Jack, why don't you uh, just comment in general terms? I know we're not naming names because we don't want to share that confidential information out there. But uh, if you want to kind of discuss some of these uh, top these uh, these common deployments and where you're seeing some successful projects. Yeah. Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, thank you again. So you know, for one uh, one thing we are seeing is in the small uh, municipality space. There are uh, a lot of times where uh, these small cities need a, re a reliable solution for wireless CCTV, but simply you know, don't have the budget. And that's really where we come in and we do really, really well because uh, we are a better engineered solution than Ubiquiti and you know, we're not uh, ridiculously priced. So, you know, like I said, the small to medium sized cities uh, as well. So, you know, really what we're seeing is a lot of these small to medium size, uh, you know, housing uh, projects, which will go to, you know, five to 10 cameras, if you will. Uh, we've seen those be really, really common, especially in the post COVID environment, uh, due to the fact that people A, want to have camera coverage, but B, uh, you know, they don't have time to trench fiber, especially, uh, at least I'm based in Chicago, we're in the midst of winter, and you would have to dig yourself out of two feet of snow. That said, you know, similar to housing communities, schools, when they do need campus uh, connectivity, 
and they do need the fact that they uh, maybe need athletic fields or other facilities being monitored. We do that. And then, you know, trucks, uh, you know, truck stops and, uh, and bus depots. So really, you know, any wide area, uh, like a parking lot that needs to be uh, covered, you know, we can do that. I've also seen this, you know, as far as parking lots as well uh, with hospitals, uh, there might be remote parking lots and, uh, you know, security integrators and hospitals respectively, you know, want to make sure that their staff is, is safe uh, if they're parking their cars uh, away from the hospital. Okay, nice. And then uh, one of the things you you were mentioning to me the other day about uh, this daisy chaining and and relay nodes to yep. reach areas that were maybe kind of non non line of sight or that you had some challenges there. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know first and foremost, this is due to the fact that we have a really good engineering team. So if you do have questions about a potential deployment, really you know reach out to myself. I can get my engineering team involved. But what Bruce is alluding to is the fact that, you know, since we are going over five gigahertz, line of sight is going to be ideal. That said, we have found ways that we can get around obstructions using daisy chaining. So, you know, that is uh, that is another thing that we do as well uh, in order to make this, you know, the solution work. Okay, great. Let me uh, let me just pop up one more poll here while we're at it, and see if I can get some uh, some comments from people. And if you have again, uh, if you have questions, go ahead and let us know. If you can see that uh, question, so really this is around bidding a project, and really what I wanted to highlight here is that we do offer design support. So if you're a system integrator and you are uh, able to um, basically just send us a, 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 a Google Maps image of where you're trying to put the cameras, where you have uh, um, access, and then uh, we can uh, help you with that, uh, with some ideas on whether you want to use a point-to-point, a point-to-multi-point, -point, a, point a, a variety of, um, of relay nodes, uh, so different ways of doing that. So uh, really that's one of the key benefits you'd get as being a as being a C Envision SI is being able to reach out to uh, to the technical team here and get support on even on the pre-sales design side uh, not just on post sales but uh, certainly reach out to Jack and he'll pull in uh, the rest of the team here as needed to uh, to make sure that project's successful and what we're also seeing I think maybe what didn't uh, you know Jack, one of the things you might want to mention or comment on is just how fast some of these projects can go online from the time of pre-design uh, by using wireless versus uh, waiting for for, for the wireline to uh, to it, go in. Exactly, exactly. So I mean, I think that's also one of the things that uh, that makes wireless uh, such a great solution is the fact that you know you're not being tied down by fiber and you're not having to wait uh, to get an approval in order to trench. So you know the ability for us to do this, uh, you know, effectively in terms of putting cameras, uh, you know, putting cameras up and getting a wireless network installed is really, really quick. Uh, you know, so much so that we can go from you know design to implementation. You know, if if we need to. You know, within a week or so, depending on you know, uh, you know what someone's time constraints are. Okay, great. And uh, you should be able to see that poll results on the screen there. Uh, we're uh, again, it looks like a pretty good cross section uh, b between a combination of some of the specific features and the the, uh, the price performance uh, reliability. And then, you know, I think one that is is low on here, but I, I'd like. To, I'd love to see it go higher is that design support from Cambium because I, I really think that will help you uh, get your legs underneath you on some projects and um, and proceed or or maybe what I can read into that is that uh, the, the it, you're not really needing the extra support but I just want to make sure that the offer is out there to reach out to us for uh, for that support so let me hide that for now and let me just go ahead and launch the last poll we'll get the last one out of the way and this is really around if you de designed a project and you did not use C Envision, what would be the reason that you did not use it? Whether, and, and you can see the list here, whether it's uh, wireless wasn't an option, it was too complicated, C Envision itself, or the price, or other. And if it's other, 
I just ask you to to comment in the chat window. And we'll let that go for another 15, 20 seconds here. Okay. I see a few uh, few others coming in. So let me, let's give it another uh, five seconds. Four, three, two, one, going, going. Gone. Okay, so um, let me share that, and you'll see that uh, in in about half the cases, wireless wasn't an option. So um, if you have one that you think is on the border borderline of whether it's an option or not, you know, I think uh, we'd love to hear about those as well to see if maybe wireless could be an option. If you consider some of the other things we talked about, like relay and and some of the propagation cap capabilities, I know I see somebody commented that. Uh, um the that they had some projects that were the distance was too far for five gigahertz so they went with a 900 megahertz solution uh so that's interesting um uh comment um so uh and uh certainly uh um within the wireless uh domain if you're using wireless and we'd certainly uh appreciate the uh the chance to uh to show you how easy you know c envision can be as an alternative but it looks like most people were uh in that uh, camp of uh, there's projects that they have that just uh, wireless wasn't an option. So love to hear more about that, where you see that wire, where wireline is actually a better solution than wireless. If that's because wires are already deployed, or you've already got fiber or coax or cabling to those locations, or wh why you kind of viewed wireless wasn't an option. So you can comment on that now or comment offline. We'd love to hear more about that. So uh, let's continue on. I'll hide that and we'll go back to the deck. And I think we'll now let's move into the new product because I want to make sure we spend some quality time on this, uh, uh, the new product here, which is our C Envision Client Max RP. So we'll give you a demo of this so that you, know, you can see how it, how it works. But effectively what we're initiating here is the ability to power the camera or other device such as a Wi-Fi access point directly off of uh, the uh, the client radio so now I can backhaul to this location provide power and connectivity to that camera or other device so this has a standard PoE input and then three PoE outputs and you can share a 45 watt budget across those three output ports so if you have, uh, in, in, in the, it will automatically share that across those depending on what you uh, what you, you're you're looking to integrate. So that eliminates uh, extra drop cables. It eliminates uh, having to have a switch co-located at that point. Uh, eliminates uh, some of the additional power supplies that you would need to to do. It just makes a much nicer, more integrated deployment approach. Um, this has the same performance as the Max R, so it has that integrated 19 dBi antenna uh, up to 600 megabits per second, and so everything else about it is the same as a Max R radio. Um, it's got the IP67 and the the three-year warranty, so all the things that are are consistent with the Max R, but now just think that it adds three PoE output ports. So this is one of the things that uh, SIs have asked us about most when we started with C Envision. Uh, was wow! It'd really be nice to be able to uh, hang that camera directly off of the radio. Uh, so now this is available. So we're starting to see these come into the distribution channel. Uh, you'll see that um, uh, our partners in the distribution channel should start seeing these. Where are we now? February. We'll see, we'll see those in the hands of our distri distribution partners probably around the middle of March, or the second half of March. Uh, so start to look for those uh, coming soon. Um, and as there, uh, um, as you may or may not have read about in the in the newspaper, but uh, we're shipping these, and and there's a lot of stuff being shipped these days. So we're we're getting them in, and uh, uh, be patient with us, but they'll be in uh, in the channel available to order uh, from your distrib distribution partner in in about uh, you know four to six weeks from now. Uh, let's see, we're gonna. 
Well, this just kind of shows a, uh, a specific, uh, some more details on that. Um, I, I don't know if uh, Jim or, or, uh, or Deem, if you want to comment on any of the more details on this, but um, it's pretty much uh, um, mix and match those ports. There, there's not a lot of uh, uh, distinction, but do you have any comments you'd like to say about that? Quiet crowd. Uh, yeah, Bruce. So, uh, so, so as you can see here, we have got four ports. One of which, of course, is uh, PoE in, uh, and I, I believe we need some correction there. It, it should be 56 volts and 60 watts PoE in, and then those 56 volts are available across all three ports. And uh, so the radio itself, uh, the max RP consumes around. Uh, 13 to 50 watt so out of those 60 we have 45 watts available across all three ports <laughs> so uh, so it, it, it's like uh, whatever you are connecting there uh, you want to make sure that 45 uh, watts total is enough for example if you happen to connect a ptz cam which itself requires 30 watts or maybe more and then on top of it if uh, or, or maybe let's say you uh, connect more than one PTZ cams and uh, 45 watts across port one, two, and three are not enough. Then you would have to take that into the consideration that uh, only 45 watts are uh, available across ports one, two, and three. Uh, and having said that, as you can see, uh, so the standard uh, PoE out, which is 802.3a for 80, are available across all three ports one, two, and three. Uh, and only port three has the capability to uh, supply, again, small correction, 56 volts, 15 watts pass through or 24 volts, 15 watts uh, pass through. So 24 volts, uh, 15 watts pass through is typically needed for uh, CN vision client devices. Uh, so if, uh, for, for, if you are doing something like daisy chaining as bruce men mentioned earlier so let's say there is a hub and the client max rp is connecting to that hub and from client max rp you want to extend your network in in kind of a daisy chaining so you would want to connect uh let's say a hub which is a client micro converted into hub and then ex connect further client connecting to that particular client micro as a hub so you can always uh, power up client micro as a hub using that port 3 uh, by configuring 24 volts 15 watts uh, poe pass through so with okay. that uh, uh, bruce uh, should i do you want to proceed or do you want me to share yeah, my let's screen? go uh, go ahead and, and share your screen now i think um i will make you the yeah. presenter and you can pop up the uh the demo here sure. i'm gonna make you the presenter All right, perfect. Let we can know. see your screen now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a very simple topology sitting uh, on my desk. So the PC which we are you are seeing right now is this PC one. It connects to Hub 360. Hub 360 connects wirelessly to Client Max RP, and then I'm using ETH3 on Client Max RP to power up Access Camera, and then ETH4 to power up a Client Micro, which is configured as a hub. Uh, so let's go to the web UI where I'm seeing that hub. If you go to monitor wireless, you would be able to see Max RP is connected as a client. And on Max RP, what I would like to show you here is in network configuration. If you scroll down, you see that Ethernet or PoE switch configuration. So port one is, <coughs> of course, PoE in using which uh, max rp gets powered up port 2 right now i i haven't connected anything that's the reason i have kept uh, i have kept it disabled and 3 and 4 as you saw in the topology is powering up uh, access camera so it's uh, poe out plus data port and same thing for eth4 powering up client micro as a hub uh, so for that let's uh, go to one of the ports configuration so state whether you want to enable it or disable it. 
uh, keep it auto negotiation enable speed from 10 to 1000 mbps duplex uh, i don't see any reason why you would do half duplex so you surely do full duplex poe out voltage available across all three ports is 56 and poe mode whether you want to do manual or auto for example auto would mean uh, standard which is 802.3 af80 as opposed to that if you don't want any negotiation just the power uh, to be sending out of these port you would choose manual and one more configuration related i mean sorry not configuration in the monitoring screen it if you go to monitor performance on max rt and scroll all the way down here okay so it is showing you the poe voltage as well as current from all these ports so uh, three and four are being used that's the reason why you see uh, the current be being delivered out to uh, these ports so with that i believe that's it i wanted to talk about uh, re related to client max rp uh, bruce do you want to add something uh no i think that's great i appreciate the uh the quick demo i think it's pretty straightforward and uh it looks like a um yeah, you know, another a, a nice clean addition to the to the GUI. So, is there any questions from the the group online? Doesn't look like it so far. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's go back. Why don't we go back and I'll, I'll present from from here. Unless, did you have any? Did you want to try to show the the, the radio itself, or do you want to just go with the pictures? I can try to show the radios as well. Give me a second. We'll uh, we'll give it a try here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it 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 doesn't allow me to do it on my phone, so I I have to do it using my laptop. So let me know after you if you if you happen to see my cam. I'm not seeing it yet. Oh, what's happened here? Give me a quick second, sorry. No, it says your webcam is already is, is in use, which is not. I, I don't know. Maybe it's an issue. Okay. All right. Well, let's go. Let's just continue on. I think we can go ahead and, um, if you can uh, make me the presenter again. Yes, sure. Oh, yeah. I can. I think I can do it from here. Okay. So, okay. So you should be back to seeing my screen. Yep. No? Okay. So I, I just have a couple more thoughts on the the Max RP. One is uh, while the Max RP does ship with a POE injector in the box. Uh, that's an indoor uh, standard uh, uh, POE injector. Uh, we there there are a couple of uh, suppliers out there that uh, we don't sell these as cambium, but uh, there's a couple out there. If there's uh, any uh, distributors online or channel partners, if you want to chime in on the chat, if you have an alternative that you carry, uh, but. Uh, here are a couple that we've worked with, uh, one from Micro Semi and one from ProSet. And these are basically uh, all outdoor PoE injectors. So you can bring an AC line in, uh, mount these in an outdoor directly on the pole or on a wall, and then uh, provide that, that PoE out. And you wouldn't necessarily even need the PoE in um, on these because you're gonna be bringing your um, data in over the air um, as the backhaul. Uh, right into the uh, the camera or other device that you have hanging off of the uh, the Max RP. So again, this would make a nice, neat uh, installation uh, with just a single uh, cable going up the to, to up the uh, the pole, and then uh, an AC power connection, and you are good to go. So th this makes for a nice, neat application. Uh, when we talk about applications with Max RP, we while well, certainly we're talking about CN Vision and being able to 
power a camera or multiple cameras off of uh, the Max RP, there are many other PoE devices that you could uh, mix and match on these type of applications. So you'll see uh, uh, you've got that single PoE drop cable. You can go with three PoE output ports. You've got layer two comms between the ports. And then uh, some of the applications we talk about are you could add video surveillance and a public Wi-Fi hotspot. So certainly you'll see in the picture on the right, a CN pilot outdoor Wi-Fi uh, access point. So that's a common application is to hang both uh, if you're if you're doing uh, public Wi-Fi or even if you're doing Wi-Fi for your um, for your own employees or for the employees of the facility, um, you can make that as a local access for Wi-Fi uh, for those uh, for those users and then still have the video surveillance uh, both hanging off of Max RP. We're also showing a LoRa gateway up there. That's actually a LoRa gateway from a company called Multitech. Uh, that is an ability to do uh, I, I, IOT or IOT applications. Um, you could also, you could hang, imagine uh, putting some physical security sensors, uh, put some uh, remote access control and hang those kind of devices directly off of the Max RP. And now you've got a uh, wireless backhaul to that, uh, to that remote entry point, uh, which makes for, and you might consider adding digital signage, a speaker, um, access control, uh, so a number of different ways that you could creatively deploy uh, this type of product. Uh, we also had some people uh, interested in putting a VoIP phone with a video camera so you could do uh, uh, safety applications for campuses and, and remote areas where you want to be able to uh, have an emergency phone and a video camera for, uh, for safety. And then uh, last but not least, point of sale terminals. If you're back calling uh, PoE point of sale, you can add video surveillance uh, again for some physical security for those users of the system. And of course, uh, the original application is hanging multiple video cameras. So if you're going to have either fixed or uh, cameras, uh, multiple directions hanging off of a single Max RP location, you have that option as well. So lots of different ideas and applications that you could do with this. And we'd certainly uh, you know, love to hear more about that if you have other ideas on how you might uh, want to take advantage of this, uh, uh, this new level of integration. Uh, I wanted to give you a co couple quick highlights on where we are with OnVIF integration. That's one of the key uh, technical features on CN Vision. Um, we, these are all the cameras that we have listed here that we have tested. Uh, although we expect most OnVIF compliant cameras to work as well, uh, but these are the ones that we've had some experience with. Um, if there's a camera on here that, that uh, that's not on list, the list that you think uh, would make sense, please uh, uh, you know, let us know. And uh, you know, maybe that's something we could, we could test out, or you know, if you want to share one with us, we could, uh, we could test it out, give you a quick uh, feedback, or you could test it out and let us know it works and we could add it to the list. Similarly, with uh, VMS uh, integration, uh, we continue to add additional VMS support. So I've got a list here of uh, the currently supported uh, VMS integrations. And then we also have uh, a, a kind of a, a brief summary. We get a question quite a bit about uh, what is the, the cost associated with integrating on a particular VMS. And you can kind of see here that you know many of these have no additional charge to do that VMS integration. A couple of them do add a license fee uh, that basically you're you're treating CNVision like another device on the network. Okay, don't see any other questions. So uh, with that, I'm going to just turn it over to uh, any open Q and A. If anybody has any questions, um, and then uh, uh, Jack, I don't know if you saw my notes on the chat, but we'll hand it over to you for the. Uh, the uh, uh, awarding of the prizes for those of you that uh, that hung in through the uh, the session today. Jack, you still there? Yep, yep, I'm still here. Uh, let me. So I see. Let me see a question coming in here. So there's a question about uh, whether Milestone requires um, a license. Let me go back to that slide. Uh, Jimmy, do you want to comment on that? I know you've had some experience with that, with Milestone. Yes, yes, surely. Uh, so Milestone requires, uh, give me one quick second. Yes, so Milestone requires license because uh, the CN Vision device, for example, Hub, 
which is sending events uh, and alarms to milestone needs to be added as a device into the milestone so so you need to add the cn vision device just like you add a camera so that cn vision device which is of course a hub will consume one license exactly as same as that consumed by the camera uh, having said that of course uh, let's say you have a hub and many clients connected to the hub you would i mean intuitively it is very intuitive that you would only want hub to be sending events because for example uh, for typical debugging where client loses wireless connectivity anyway if client loses wireless connectivity with the hub it's not going to be able to send the events to uh, the milestone because it cannot reach milestone so you would only want your hub to be sending events and alarms to uh, milestone so uh, what i'm trying to tell is in one network where you have one hub and multiple clients only device which you need to add to milestone and pay for the license is the hub device so yep i believe uh, okay so yeah let us know if that answered your question thanks uh Chinmay. yes uh, and there's a question about uh, Oh, go, go ahead. You have something else? Sorry, before that, there's a follow up question. So, a camera and a hub one license. license. So, I said a hub, hub will require one license just as one camera. Yeah, uh, Bruce, we can move. Ahead. Yeah, so I think we covered that. Yeah, so a uh, question about Link Planner. So, as of today, we have not added CN Vision to Link Planner. Um, Primarily because most of the links that are deployed are, are sh in general shorter, and the the, the terrain is not uh, not the critical factor. Um, it's, it, it'd yes, be interesting to see what it, we we also have the uh, companion tool, which will give you uh, similar functionality uh, as far as uh, planning for capacity of a link. Is that is that what you were going to comment, Jimmy? Yes, exactly, and. Okay. Uh, so that's the dedicated tool we have designed for uh, CN Vision, uh, which is called CN Vision Companion, and which gives you ability to add the camera as well as the tool calculates maximum required throughput by the camera when you uh, give it three variables, uh, which is frames per second, compression, and uh, codec. Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah. All right, and then uh, let's see. There's a question here about uh, CN Maestro support. So um, I don't, uh, Dima. Do you want to comment on that, or I can I can chime in? Right. Uh, so on CN Maestro support, uh, we do plan uh, the CN Maestro support. Um, from the top of my head, I I don't remember in which specific release um, the full featured support is planned to, but the uh, the basic support is already in there, and if you grab uh, the firmware through our support, and uh, we are trying to uh, publish the 461 beta uh, really soon, it will have the CN Maestro uh, integration yeah. in there okay. because it, it, it was a popular uh, request from. Yeah, uh, my understanding is it's being tested Indian now, and, and um, mm -hmm. that it should be coming in a. Um, yep. in, in, a, in a short shortly so definitely we got the feedback and, and we're adding that so uh, um, let's see it looks like um, uh, you know we have a uh, attendee oh, oh you're, you're, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna unmute Elvira and see if I can do that uh, Elvira how good good afternoon thanks for joining good afternoon. actually good morning because i'm in chicago right now oh, great. okay so you're in the snow too with us <laughs> yes i enjoy beautiful winter in chicago so good morning everyone and my name is elvira kozuska i'm from wincom technologies i am big fan of cn vision um i really focus on this so far i have only one uh, project one installation uh, this is with municipality of Hochevo from poland this is not very big municipality beautiful located on baltic sea and this is a question that I just sent about CN Maestro came from my customer. And thank you, Dimitri, for uh, uh, answering. And generally speaking, this um, uh, installation worked uh, very well. Um, my customer really prized the easy installation. 
but also that have two comments. Number one, they are asking if you can create some kind of dashboard so it, it can show preview of all installed cameras. Uh, so because right now it looks like they cannot see a picture from all cameras in the same time. So su such a dashboard probably will be very helpful. So this is number one. And number two, uh, during the configuration, um, I mean, if you can do something like during configuration, you can um, this, uh, determine uh, which uh, channel, frequency, uh, weather radar is working. Because during this installation, this um, weather radar disrupt the work of the hub. And you know, the system die for a few seconds and they have to wait, wake up and then keep going. So maybe if maybe some guidelines and you can start and you see that you can determine in every country what is operation of weather rather. So this work of the CN vision will be without any disruption. So this is only this two comments, dashboard and problem with this weather rather. <laughs> Okay, so probably uh, something related to the de thanks for thanks for the the feedback. That's great. Uh, probably some discussion around DFS, which uh, yes. would be uh, required in in certain countries um, to, uh, to 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 monitor for uh, for like you said other radar systems that might come online. And then um, I don't, Dima, did you follow or understand the the request for uh, some kind of a um, the, yeah, the Hollywood Squares view, or the which which is typically done on VMS, but on, on the dashboard now. Right. Um, so the we we can at least think about it how we can uh, handle this request. Uh, the the main issue that um, for this camera integration thing, uh, we show the camera feed on the laptop itself, meaning in the browser. It is not actually streamed to the device. So we have to think in terms of the bandwidth requirements, uh, if we can, uh, well, how many cameras we can support in this case. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, I think what would be interesting, uh, Avera, for, or for anybody else uh, that as you uh, have discussions is, you know what? What is the um, what is the operational value in being able to see the the dashboard from multiple cameras? Is it because you want to see the image quality or the image alignment, or is it because you want to see the um, just a, a a green, yellow, red status of that stream? Uh, that would help us uh, sort of dial in what what would be the most uh, useful thing to to add to the to the product. Absolutely, I will talk to my customer and get back to you. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody else uh, want to comment on any anything while while we're here today? Uh, okay. Uh, Jack, do you want to uh, to 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 be the uh, the, the the award uh, uh, person? Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. Happy to do so. So just so just so I can confirm. Uh, you know, who amongst uh, the attendees are security integrators. I believe I have Tony, Rob, Georges, and uh, Fernando. Am I missing anyone? If so, please put in the chat and I'll, I'll add you in. Uh, I just want to make sure I have everyone. All right, looks like, uh, looks like you've got it. Okay. All right. Uh, well, give me one moment. All right. Drum roll, please. Let's roll this thing. All right. And the winner is uh, For which price? Your, uh, the the free client Max R uh, the Max RP is uh, Georges. Uh, uh, and I'm I'm sorry, sir, if I'm mispronouncing your name. All right, so uh, congratulations, uh, Georgios. We'll uh, we'll reach out to you on email and uh, get uh, your contact information and, and uh, get and you uh, your 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 um, your max RP. If I'm not mistaken, we do have an Amazon gift card as well. Correct. Okay. And the winner for that is Tony. What's the last name? Uh, let me let me look. Tony. Tony So. Okay. 
Yep. All right, Tony. Tony uh, also will reach out to you um, by email and get you your uh, Amazon gift card. So uh, thanks everybody for joining today. I don't know if there's any other questions. Um, doesn't look like it and uh, we appreciate it and we, we will try to do another one of these sessions uh, down the road so if you have other SIs or that you uh, or other people on your organization that would benefit from talking with the engineering team or the support teams um, please uh, invite them to come to the next one and, and uh, appreciate your time you want to say anything Bruce, else, yeah uh, just one more thing so you know we do have a, a you know a team that can assist you know with both sales and tech issues so if there isn't you know if there is a you know questions about selling cn vision please don't be afraid to loop me in and obviously if there's if there's technical concerns you know we can do that as well uh but please we are uh you know we're here to help and make this as successful as possible all right jack why don't you send out why don't you put, drop your uh email i think most people know how to reach you but why don't you drop your email in the in the uh, the chat to all uh, attendees just so they know how to reach you for sure Sure thing. Happy to do so. That, I should have put that on the slide, but uh, neglected to do that. Okay. Nope. No worries. Well, thank you very much, everyone. All right. Thanks. Have a good rest of your day.